കരുണാർണവമായി കരുതഗതി നൽകും അരുണാചല ശിവം നമസ്തെ so a friend on facebook asked me about my study of sound vibration how did i get started and what was the story behind it well it's kind of a long story so i said i'll just make a video about it <laughs> that's easier than trying to have a conversation online so how did i get into this spiritual sound vibration It started back in my childhood. I was always very attracted to music. And at an early age I started studying piano and even making compositions. And then later I went to conservatory and got a degree in musical composition. And that was my first career. I was very successful, but it only lasted a couple of years because the music business especially in New York at that time is so corrupt uh, it was quite disgusted by the whole thing so i left and i went to the west coast i still was active in music as a session musician and i started studying indian music with ali akbar khan the great sarod player from calcutta and he in turn introduced me to the science of sound see i had this question how does music affect people emotionally i know and anybody who listens to music avidly knows that music has tremendous emotional effects well why is that how does it work nobody could answer my question <laughs> even people who had gone to the top music schools in the world the sorbonne could not answer this question and some of them even denied that music has any emotional effect whatsoever this is what i call intelligent idiots <laughs> they have a whole complicated explanation for everything but they themselves are bereft of the deepest human experiences it's quite a shame actually but some of these people wind up unfortunately as teachers and they give wrong ideas to all their students but anyway somehow i survived that experience <laughs> and i found myself on the west coast studying indian music with ali akbar khan and i asked him the same question and he said oh it's rasa easy <laughs> so of course that inspired me to look into this idea of rasa and how music affects us through this concept of rasa or transcendental emotion so khan sahab directed me toward the books of hazrat inayat khan now hazrat inayat khan was the uh founder of the Sufi order in the west he founded a school based in San Francisco and they were holding regular sufi dances and like that but even though i loved his books and especially his books on music i couldn't join his movement because the westerners were making it very cheap very popular using it as a basis for social interactions and mainly you know to get dates <laughs> which i found horribly disgusting and so i confined myself to studying the books and his books are wonderful i'll put some links in the video description you can take a look at them So Hazrat Inayat Khan basically discussed how sound itself is sacred. And the reason it's sacred is because sound is the vehicle of the creation. 
In fact, he said in one of his books, he who knows the secret of sound knows the mystery of the whole universe. This is very deep. And we've gone into it a little bit in some of our videos about spiritual music, this series, and in the series on the Matrika. The Matrika is the letters of the Sanskrit alphabet, and these are the sounds that are used to create everything that exists. And the way the sound is used is described in the music system, which is according to harmonics. Harmonics means every single object in the universe has a frequency, a resonant frequency. And that resonant frequency then has harmonic frequencies at a distance of twice, three times, four times the frequency of the root. So we've gone into this in the music series. I'm not going to go into it here very much. But suffice it to explain that each of these harmonic intervals, that is, the distance, the, the vibrational distance between the notes of the harmonic series, has a specific emotional effect. And this is quite objective. It's not dependent on culture or background or training, but it's something that is experienced by everyone, and this has been proven in experiments and so on. So what does it mean then that sound is sacred? Well, as it turns out, each of us has a relationship with God. First of all, we have a relationship with a specific form of God, of the innumerable forms of God and goddess. We have a deep relationship with one of them, and this is called the Ishta Devata. Ishta Devata means the one form of God that we relate to more than any other. And our relationship with the Ishta Devata is characterized by a certain mood. And this is called rasa. The rasas, the principal rasas, are five. Neutrality, servitorship, friendship, parenthood, and conjugal love. Conjugal love is the highest rasa. Because in conjugal love, one experiences complete surrender to God. And one also gets the highest spiritual pleasure. So this isn't like ordinary conjugal love in the material world. Huh? Try to understand. This is very exalted, romantic, kind of emotional, spiritual relationship with God. With the particular form of God with which you are related, your Ishta Devata. So how does music express this? Well, there are many mantras and prayers. The mantras are especially potent because they are like condensed sound vibration. The sound vibration in mantras, first of all, every mantra begins with Aum. Aum is the universal seed mantra, Bija mantra which means seed, or mula mantra, which means root mantra. So this bija or mula mantra begins each mantra. And besides Aum, there are, well, quite a few others, like ing, shring, hring, kling, aing, and so on. And we talk about those in our other series, especially our series on the Sodashi Mantra. Maha Sodashi Mantra has several of these root mantras, and it, because of this, it's very, very powerful. So along with the mantras, then there are the swaras. And the swaras are the tones that the mantra is recited with. So every mantra has the uh, syllables, Huh? 
the akshara or syllables. It has the swaras or the tune that it's recited with. And it also has a rhythm called matra. These three things are the essentials of mantra chanting. And you should know them if you want to work with mantras, because this is what empowers the mantra and allows it to have an impact on your uh, consciousness. Now, one thing that actually belongs in the beginning, but I didn't want to talk about it because it's very confidential, is the inner sound, Nada Brahman. Nada Brahman is the inner sound that sometimes sounds like whistling huh, in your inner ear. But if you go in a quiet place and you listen carefully, you'll find that it has all kinds of dimensions. It has middle and lower frequencies as well. And these are deeper and harder to hear. But if you meditate on these sounds, you get all kinds of amazing uh, realizations. So I was initiated into this process of meditation on sound by Kirpal Singh and his son Charan Singh instructed me after his father's death. So I meditated on these sounds for many years. In fact, this was my chief meditation during the time I was studying music. Now, Ali Akbar Khan took me aside one day and he told me, you know, you're not the type of person that should be a concert musician. He said, it's a tough life. You're always traveling. There's a lot of criticism, a lot of distraction. The audience doesn't pay good attention. They don't really hear. And I think you would find it very unsatisfying. Your heart is too soft, he said. You should be a spiritual musician and offer your music only to God in the temple. I said, well, how do you do that? <laughs> you know. And he said, I'll introduce you to a guru who will give you everything you need to become a spiritual musician. So he took me into San Francisco and introduced me to my Adi guru, that is Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And so actually, Kansa was my, what's called Vartma Pradarshaka guru. Vartma Pradarshaka Guru means the guru who introduces you to your Satguru, your Adi Guru, the first fully self-realized being who brings you to enlightenment. So, make a long story short, as a result of serving Srila Prabhupada, I traveled all over the world doing kirtans, and I recorded many uh, albums of devotional music and I was able to uh, learn all the arts of archanam, deity worship, and puja, making offerings, and so many other arts of karma and bhakti yoga. And because of this, when I finally settled down uh, at the ripe old age of 36, <laughs> to meditate. Within six weeks, I was able to get Brahma Jnan, huh? Om Prakash, direct realization of Brahman. And I've discussed this in other series, especially in The Secret of the Golden Flower and like that. So that's pretty much the story of how I got involved with spiritual sound vibration. I would love to teach this to somebody, but you have to be here, you have to be present. It can't be done online because it's very hard to hear the subtle sounds. Oh, and the one most secret thing, which I'm waiting to the very end to give, is that this inner sound, this Nada Brahma, is the hissing of the snake of Kundalini. <laughs> and when this sound disappears, then you know within a day or two you're going to leave this body. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.